51 past the hour. If you want to be inspired, watch this segment. Here with us now, the founder of the Global Medical Relief Fund, Elisa Montante. Am I saying it right? You are. <laughs> it's written phonetically in it. Uh, she's the author of the book, I'll Stand By You, One Woman's Mission to Heal the Children of the World. So let's go backwards because the Global Medical Relief Fund, tell us what it is and what it does. Well, Global Medic Relief Fund sounds really big, <laughs> but actually... Uh, it's a house. It's, it's a walk-in closet, <laughs> uh, and that's how it started. Um, Fifteen years ago, I got involved in a very local fundraiser on Staten Island, and that was to raise money for toys and school supplies for the children of Bosnia. And that led me to meet the Bosnia ambassador at the time, and I asked him how I could help. And I had met him at the United Nations, and he said, you know, thank you for your interest, but we have stronger needs. And uh, more than pencil cases. And he reached in his drawer, and he handed me this letter that this 11-year-old boy had written to him. And he had lost his two arms and a leg to a landmine. And I saw the picture, and I read his letter, and it was right then and there that my life did a spin. And... Um, I recruited airlines, hospitals, and uh, prosthetic you got to companies. Work. So I tell did. me, I mean, I'm going to jump ahead, though. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that moment has has led to today. You have right now a thriving home mm -hmm. that cares for children right. from around the world, children that come from war zones. Yes, war zones and natural disasters. Uh, Fifteen years to fast forward, mm -hmm. uh, we've helped over 160 children from 22 countries. We were on 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes found out about I the work, the piece. It was and it was phenomenal. And uh, the bonus is that two wonderful people, Miles Nadell, who is a CEO of... We know Miles. Miles. Uh-huh. <laughs> MDC Partners, and Tyler Perry uh, had seen the piece. And they both, not knowing one another, bought a home for us called the Data Dream House. So now when the children come from all these different parts of the world, that's where they stay and heal. And then when they're, they, get he, they get fixed here, hopefully, mm -hmm. they recur. And then is your whole idea that they then get reintroduced, basically taken home, and they go back to their previous lives? Well, How does that work? the thing is, even though we've helped about 160 children, there's been about almost 1,000 follow-up visits because we follow up with the children until they're 21. The Shriners Children Hospital are my lifeline, and that's because they provide all the prosthetics, mm -hmm. surgery, for these children. But for example, if someone were to come from Syria now, mm -hmm. you can't send them back given that this is civil war. So what, what would happen? Well, I have a Syrian boy here now, actually. Yeah. I went to Turkey to get him, which took me three months. Um, but he is here. And it is a problem because uh, I filed for humanitarian parole. Didn't have a passport. He carried his brother across the border, mm -hmm. literally. And now if he goes back to Turkey, they'll deport him. So it, it's an issue. However, his uh, brother is having multiple surgeries, so we'll cross that bridge. So you, you, all these kids, by the way, Jillian, have these complex problems, just getting them here and then maybe getting them home, maybe not. And that's just part of the backdrop of the work that you do, Jillian. Absolutely. I must say, having quickly skimmed through the beginning of this book thing. right now, one of the things that's most inspiring and I think really touches us all is that your whole endeavor was born out of your own pain mm -hmm. and your own tragedy mm -hmm. and you decided to channel it into something positive by helping others. Right. And it's back to that old adage that when you throw yourself into helping others, mm -hmm. you, often heal you end up heal yourself. So let's, let's describe what that story is um, and what motivates the book because it was about 15 years ago you were struggling with depression and panic attacks because you lost your mother, your grandmother, and your high school sweetheart all within a short time. Mm -hmm. And you were grieving, but probably also wondering what was going to drop next. Exactly. You, know, you start to become exactly. post-traumatic stress when you have three or four extremely grievous losses in a row. Absolutely. And little did I know that my prayers would be answered by an 11-year-old boy from half halfway across the world that had written a letter that happened to land in my lap. And I learned from writing the book, uh, basically, that, you know, when you help others, you know, the gift is that you find that you're healing yourself as well. Mm. It's fabulous. This is fabulous. Yeah. It really it just shows what one person can do at a hands-on retail level. Really fantastic. So, uh, full disclosure, my daughter and I are going to do some work this summer with the kids there, uh, yes. finding activities. And so I look forward oh. to working with There's you so and learning so much about what you can do with your life. <laughs> uh, Alyssa, yeah. Alyssa, Lisa Montanti. Alyssa.
For some reason, I have a hard time with Elisa. Thanks. Find uh, out how you can help the Global Medical Relief Fund. Visit gmrfchildren.org. That's, again, the Global Medical Relief Fund. The conversation continues on Afternoon Mojo, how Elisa continues to aid wounded children all over the world from a computer and a phone in her home office. Visit afternoonmojo.msnbc.com. Thank you again. Thank you. And uh, everyone should take a look at the book. I'll stand by you if they need and they some inspiration. And they go on the website as well, lisamontanti.com. Right. There you go. Very good. You've got it. Get, you know, that whole PR Absolutely. side of things. I'm, I'm trying to I'm get worried. her out there. Good, Richard. <laughs> yes, foreign policy yeah. begins at home. Exactly. Uh, begins with a good PR person. Richard Haas, uh, thank you as well. You can get an excerpt of Richard's new book, Foreign Policy Begins at Home, on our website, mojo.msnbc.com. Definitely incredible timing for that book, Richard. Yeah. Right. Jillian Tett, congratulations. <laughs> on, is it how many years? 25. 120. 120. I think she looks really good for 125. <laughs> yes. And we turned the Empire State Building pink last night. You did? We did. And we turned the Empire State Building salmon pink in celebration. I'm so worried about the crown yeah. prince. <laughs> the Financial Times of New York these days. I don't think he's going to recover. And his throat surgery. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the expanding up next, the expanding criminal case in the Boston bombings raises new questions about civil liberties and immigration policy. We'll discuss next on Morning Joe.